And then when you put it down in the assembly, uh, typically this head assembly, I don't necessarily have already taken out. There's one screw on the bottom of the head assembly that you can loosen after you've taken off the magnet and the other items. And when you loosen it, you'll be able to kind of teeter the head out of the way a little bit. But you already want to have your paper and stuff in place so that it's not physically going to scratch anything or the two heads aren't going to hit each other. If the two heads hit, in most cases, they might be okay as long as it was like a very small uh, hit and, you know, just the paper was in between or something in that neighborhood. But, you know, if you like slide them right off of the platter, they're probably going to hit each other and destroy each other. Uh, and you just don't want to take any more chances than you have to. So if it's still in place, you can actually put this in there, screw all your screws back in, pull this off, and unlock it. And then the platters will stay aligned. They will not move. They will not turn. And you'll be able to repair your drive, get it running, hook it up to a machine, and then you'll be able to use standard data recovery software to do a number of different things. Uh, there's plenty of of specific software for each operating system, for each item. Um, I highly suggest trying to image a drive or do something with it before you actually try to do the logical recovery. Sometimes you only get one chance and one shot at getting that drive back and getting the data off of it. Anybody have any questions? One more time. Wipe off the platters, is that what you said? Could somebody repeat that for me? You, you know, come. One more time. No, uh, I have never seen that successfully. He asked if uh, you could buff out defects from a disc if there's a scratch or something on it. I have never successfully seen a buffed out uh, uh, scratch in a disc actually work. Uh, what happens in that case, if you actually have something that's, that's imperative that you get it back, you're going to have to deal with what the head's going to hit and the fact that you're probably going to destroy one or two heads in the process of repairing it. So if you can, you can start imaging. You can image from the beginning of the disc to the error and then try to image from the end of the disc to the error. And that may take you two sets to get it right. But I have been able to piece two pieces of a drive together that way and actually do a recovery while it was actually hitting and scratching the platter. But, uh, but it is very touchy, and it's going to take a little bit of time and two drives. Green? <clears throat> I get this a lot, too, and this ends up being one of those conversations I have with uh, data recovery companies is about dust, about what about a clean room and what you're going to do. Well, the very first thing is, is that for a very short term, actually trying to do a data recovery, if you can do it in the cleanest place possible, you'll be able to get your data back. I mean, we're talking about a situation where you're not going to spend the $2,000 or something to actually do a data recovery, so you're going to take the best possible effort you can. But when the drive starts to spin up, the air bearing that it creates actually pushes any content that's on the platters off of the platters as long as it's not stuck there. So, I mean, literally, if you had a piece of dust, it would actually blow off of the drive once it started to spin up. And they actually knew this, manufacturers actually knew that even while the drive was enclosed and it was running, that it would create its own particles as little pieces and fragments might come off of it in bad blocks or something. And they have little trays in the edge of your disk that you'll see there where little pieces of fragments will actually blow off and get caught in these little tray areas on the disk to keep them from floating around inside the platters and inside the disk. So you're not trying to repair a disk to keep it running. The drive is not going to be nearly as important as the data that's on it. So the whole point is just to get the data off. And I think you can cleanly do that in a nice, clean environment without having to have a, a clean room. Obviously, if it's mission critical, it's best to do it in a clean room. I have a clean room, and I use that all the time. So from that standpoint, but I have done other drives that were not as important on the fly or at a remote location. Yes, sir? Red? What brands of drives, I, I think he really wants to know what the best brand of drive is. Um, I would have to say that they're all going to die. They all are not great. They all are bad. I will tell you that the content, um, I've had more problems, and I get more drives in that are Western Digital drives than anything that are desktop drives. And then laptop drives, I get more IBM drives in than anything else, IBM Hitachi. But the question again is, 
what's the market? I mean, if they, if like every laptop has a you know OEM a IBM drive, well then those are probably going to be the largest quantity I'm going to get. Uh, I mean, there's some Western Digital laptop drives. I haven't had any of those in, uh, but I typically use Seagate, and for only one reason, you got a five-year warranty. So back up, back up often, back up quick, and uh, if it dies at least in five years, I get a replacement drive. So, yes, sir. The the platter swap thing, uh, and I'm thinking again. You know, a lot of this stuff is like reverse engineer kind of people make things to work. So they're not great names, but uh, this one is called a headstack platter extractor. So they call it an HPE. Now, if you look in the white paper or you look on the web page that I have all this posted on, I have a link to uh, a company called Salvation Data that makes a product that you can buy overseas and they ship it here. I haven't found one in the U.S. that actually makes one and sends it here. Uh, but they have a couple of things in this toolkit for the, for the you know, 250 up bucks that you can buy this thing for. Um, I, you know, there's just a number of ways to try to get around this problem, but, uh, but that one's probably going to be the best one. Yes, sir? Raid zero is bad. <laughs> uh, for recovery, it's bad. Uh, you have to repair whichever drive possibly failed in Raid zero, and then image both of them, and then use a piece of software to reinterlace the two back into a new image. So you're going to have to figure out a way to repair that drive, and you have to have an image. You won't be able to do it like a file recovery or a logical recovery that way till you have the solid image. So my suggestion would be to use DD Rescue or something and make an image of both drives before you actually find a tool that says, now I'm going to take you know, two dumps and actually put them back together and weave them back together. But you also have to know what the interleave was. You have to know if it's done in 64Ks or you know, what the block size was. That's it. Thank you.